Let's talk about the mega event of the week, the one that literally felt like we were not only drinking from the fire hose, but we were being sprayed across the face with so many announcements at one time. I was literally doing the keynote. I'm like taking a note of the new thing. I'm like, wait, he's already under the third next thing. How is he going this fast with his many announcements? The magic leather jacket, what the heck packed your attention at GTC? Well, first off, it was definitely the fire hose, I agree. And it took me about three days to even get through it. I've published absolutely nothing except for Twitter. <laughs> so that's how behind I am. But I am going to publish uh, something eventually. I had my whole team engaged. They're going to be writing, uh, they're going to be writing about this. But I think what I want to do is, is give my bigger takeaways from an opportunity we had to talk with uh, NVIDIA CEO Jensen Wong. And so, you know, th this might get a little geeky, but you know, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a geeky uh, business. So Geek I, yeah, um, it, it's kind of funny. I, I chuckle when people ask NVIDIA, well, why did you do a monolithic die? And a monolithic die is, is essentially the way that all chips were done until the last two years. Uh, now you see big, huge designs that are, are using chiplets that uh, use really high speed interconnects and advanced packages to to make them happen. And and it's kind of funny, like I, I hear NVIDIA get that question and and it, it's absolutely ridiculous because if you can hit uh, perf PPW performance, power, wattage, um, and you can hit your yield targets, you absolutely want to freaking monolithic die because it's cheaper. Um, and, and, and the way that Jensen talked, uh, I'm absolutely convinced we're going to we will see a multi die H100. This is their new GPU. So imagine four H100s in an advanced package. Uh, we have to figure out the power, but uh, I think NVIDIA can figure out just about uh, just, just about uh, anything. So the other thing that came across is even though there's the Grace uh, super super processor out there that's a cpu by the way um that is based on the latest arm neoverse ip don't confuse them with trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with amd or intel or ventana uh somebody somebody like that uh, in in the data center i think we're going to see nvidia do cpus that are fit for a purpose that aren't necessarily, they're not getting from an AMD or an Intel or a Ventana. And what that means is, is, I mean, look at Grace. I mean, the bandwidth of Grace is higher than any CPU I'm aware of. And that's essentially to get data between in and out the CPU to the GPU. So um, I think the market wants an alternative to Intel and AMD out there for general purpose data center CPUs. Also on the PC side, I think we need, you know, markets always go in three and maybe Qualcomm's that third PC vendor that's uh, that's out there. Uh, but I think NVIDIA would just bring the hammer down on an ARM-based Windows SoC. My final observation, or, or maybe it's a reiteration, which was, oh my gosh, NVIDIA just didn't bring out a chip or a technology. It brought out uh, new IP in the GPU and the CPU and interconnects. It brought the processor out, which is a combination of those. And then it brought out entire platforms. And then it brought entire systems, i.e. DGX. And then it brought out entire supercomputers, which are multiple DGXs networked uh, together in an intelligent fashion. And then, they put uh, APIs uh, and services and programming on top of it. This company is a full stack play headed towards what I think Apple is doing right now, where they could be a one-stop shop for the data center for just about anything. They are missing the CPU, of course, but it's kind of funny, strategically, I was thinking about this, Daniel. If you're NVIDIA, you much rather have AMD and NVIDIA investing all their R&D into the CPU 
banging up against each other, going general purpose and spending all their R&D so they won't have as much R&D to compete with NVIDIA on the GPU side. So that kind of hit me uh, yesterday as I was going through this, but that's my analysis. Don't yawn. This is interesting content. <laughs> oh, people know I n I'm not yawning because I'm bored. I'm yawning because I work too much, but uh, I'm super uh, actually stoked about all the announcements, Pat. You hit a few things that just worth reiterating. I mean, the full stack narrative, you know, uh, hardware, software, frameworks, architectures. This is what defines and differentiates NVIDIA. You talk to some of their key employees and execs, they don't even really necessarily want to be a chip company or known as a chip company. They, yeah. they will say, hey, we're a software company, we're a full stack. And, and the truth is they are, and that is why the company has become such a juggernaut, is that yeah. they don't only control you know, the ecosystem from the standpoint of the supply of GPU chips, but they have the software and they, they draw the developers and the ecosystem in. Um, do it across the board. You mentioned it, Pat. It's it's hardware. It's fabric. You know, our, our team, Ron Westfall, just wrote about, you know, a little bit about the, the DPU. And there's a new fabric from a company called Pluribus that was really interesting that they're partnering with NVIDIA on. Um, and, and just the way that they're using DPUs to strategically uh, offload workloads. And by the way, creating a category that they didn't even really own by just creating the vernacular of the category. Yeah. And, and so uh, that actually makes me want to run into another category they're sort of creating. I, in our conversation with Jensen, you and I both had the chance to talk to him. You know, I asked him about Metaverse and Omniverse because there was a slate of Omniverse announcements at this thing. Omniverse uh, for 3D, Omniverse for uh, industrial digital twins. They have the OVX now, yeah. a specialized compute platform, literally for creating industrial digital twins. You know, you think about accelerated computing for different things, drug compound identification. Well, now they've got one for literally creating a uh, simultaneous autonomous uh, coexisting worlds where we're gonna be able to test automobiles, smart cities and grids. We're gonna be able to build products and services and they're going to use AI to continue to evolve intelligently in real time on, a, on the OVX platform. And then you've got Omniverse. Now I have 150,000 downloads of Omniverse, okay? With a 50 million download opportunity. Pat, you wanna talk about recurring revenue? So chip companies don't usually have recurring revenue, do they? Not, not at scale, uh -huh. um, NVIDIA does. So <laughs> NVIDIA has a plan um, already in place across its business. In Omniverse, it's got uh, it's going to look at the 50 or so million developers that, that Huang mentioned and charge them $1,000 a year for uh, the access to the Omniverse platform, which, by the way, they've now put in the cloud to democratize and make it more available. So this could be Omniverse to develop apps for the metaverse gaming. It could be Omniverse to develop apps for industrial digital twins. It could be Omniverse for, you know, 3D, um, you know, for 3D rendering, for creating virtual worlds. And they've already, by the way, got all these softwares out there, Pat, $1,000 times 50 million potential users that could then use this to deploy things on Roblox, deploy, deploy things on Meta, deploy things in Microsoft Mesh, deploy things anywhere they want to. Pat, do the math quick, 50 million times 1,000. It's a lot of freaking money. 50 billion, I believe is what it is recurring. Oh, by the way, that's just the developers. Then they charge $1,000 a year for each device. Uh, that could be a core, um, sorry, that could be each robot created, an, av an avatar created. That could be an autonomous vehicle. So now you've got $1,000 a year times, was that another 50 million, 100 million? How many of these uh, robots and aut autonomous vehicles might be out there? Oh, and then Pat, by the way, the same thing being done with their enterprise AI license. So there's an enterprise AI license to be able to basically layer on the N NVIDIA frameworks and software on top of whatever core you're already using. So they're like, yeah, you know, you're, we hope you'll use our GPUs, but you know, there's another 50 million compute cores out there, servers, to your point, Pat. We'll charge 2,000 a year to, yeah. to add our, that's another 100 billion. So I don't know if you saw this, Pat, but I'll, I'll kind of end here. They basically came out with a new TAM looking across about 150 million in Omniverse, the automotive TAM, the gaming TAM, and the data center TAM. And guess how big the new TAM that, that NVIDIA announced is? 200 billion. Like a trillion. I'm not kidding. The overall what? NVIDIA TAM that they put out there, there's a whole market watch piece of how they basically aggregated all the TAMs of their different business units, including the 150 billion Omniverse. Because again, just those, just the 50 million developers and robots, 
the recurring revenue of that would be over $100 billion. And so when I wrote back in 2020 that NVIDIA had the trajectory to be the next trillion dollar market cap company, they continue to put the pieces in place to do that. A very good event for the company. Um, I, you know, I, I really do, um, I do feel a little bit of sympathy for the companies trying to keep up right now. I'm not sure how they can do it, but at the same time, I never put it past anybody, but good event for NVIDIA.